Thank you, Gianluca. It's a pleasure to be here. And my talk is actually going to be on some massively parallel computations that have been carried out on the blue gene systems at Argonne. I'm a computational scientist at Argonne National Lab at the Leadership Computing Facility. And you see a picture over here of Mira, which is our newest system. So it has 48 racks of the blue gene queue. And each compute node on the blue gene queue has 16 cores, and each core has four hardware threads. And here is a snapshot, and it shows that the machine is actually full and running. There are jobs on it. So the particular focus of this talk, I understand that the audience is fairly diverse in general. I see a few graduate students over here. So I hope this talk will actually have something for everybody. But it will be at a fairly high level over here. So since we are primarily concerned with simulating turbulent flows, turbulence, we live in the atmospheric boundary layer. There is turbulence all around us. So the governing equations for turbulence is understood to be the Navier-Stokes equations. There is no analytical solution which is known as yet, and it requires a statistical approach. And to quote Richard Feynman, this might be the, the most uh, important unsolved problem in classical physics. So to give you a spectrum of uh, the various approaches in turbulence, I take this from uh, a presentation made by Philippe Spallard. Philippe at Boeing had made this presentation, where you have various, in, since, the, since the turbulent phenomena has a large number of scales, and these scales have got to be simulated um, with a high fidelity. So you have things from DNS, direct numerical simulation, where you don't model any of the scales of motion, to larger simulation, where you model some of the scales of motion, and you evolve some of the filtered scales of motion. And then you have detached steady simulation, or DES, which is a hybrid RANS LES uh, approach. And then you have RANS. And then Philippe has a fairly conservative, probably a pessimistic view of what is it that can be achieved um, going forward. And Philippe still uh, uh, places a lot of uh, importance. And it's the view that uh, hybrid RANS LES approach is what is going to be used for aerospace design. There is a difference of opinion over here. So let me show you some simulations that have actually been done on the blue gene P which has now been retired, and the simulation is going on in the blue gene queue. So the first simulation is of a turbulent boundary layer, a spatially evolving turbulent boundary layer. And the reason I show this is this simulation was actually done on the blue gene P. This was a fairly large simulation. But what Bob Moser and I we set about exploring in the simulation was to actually rewrite parts of the code. It was a legacy code. And we st started rewriting parts of the code to actually make use of open MP on the blue gene P. And the reason we decided to do this was so that we could have a precursor to what could be done or how things need to be done to actually make use of MPI and OpenMP on the blue gene queue. So this simulation was uh, the largest simulation and probably is still the largest simulation of spatially evolving turbulent boundary layers for an RE theta of over, over 6,000. And uh, over here, you see, um, so Argon, we work both on they were improving the performance of the code, modifying the code, as well as on the visualization uh, of the results from this code. Moving forward, we decided that we would take this experience and see what could be done with channel flow. Channel flow simulations have a rich history over here. We're starting with the initial computations of Kim, Moin, and Moser uh, here at Stanford in 1987. And they started with an initial RE tau, which they were able to achieve then, was 180, which probably was state of the art then, to moving forward to 2006. Um, Jimenez and his team were actually able to achieve an RE tau of over 2000. And currently, uh, Bob is still processing his results, but uh, my understanding is that he has been able to achieve an RE tau in excess of uh, 5000 currently. Now, why do we actually need that? So the simulation setup is very simple. Um, it's not a complex geometry at all. And uh, we actually started working with Bob on this even before the blue gene Q actually was, uh, uh, was there on the floor at, at Argonne. And we, Bob was one of the recipients of what we call the early science program hours. So he received 150 million hours which were both uh, to prepare the score, to rewrite the score. The score essentially started out as a planetary boundary layer code. And uh, the reason I actually uh, say this, despite the fact that this is a disarmingly simple code, 
is uh, to appeal to the graduate students over here that the code was written like you would actually design a Formula One car. I'm alluding to the analogy that uh, Gianluca made initially for uh, codes of this kind where you can actually rewrite it. And this work was entirely done by a graduate student and he was able to e-code every bit of performance that could be obtained from an MPI OpenMP code. The interesting thing was that uh, this code is actually run, it makes use of only one MPI process per core. It makes use of all 64 OpenMP threads. And here is a schematic of how the various uh, operations are done. You have, uh, uh, you have transposes, you have forward DFTs, and we actually have the time stepping of the Navier-Stokes equations here. And uh, here is a picture which actually shows the scaling. This is, the code has been, uh, it shows a 96.5 percent parallel efficiency on all the racks of Mira, once again, using one MPI per core, and, uh, one MPI per node, and 64 open MP threads per core. Moving forward, we have the simulation of uh, Alexei Koklov. Alexei Koklov has been studying uh, the deflagration to detonation transition for some time now. And he is also the author of, uh, he initially proposed and developed a code built around what he calls the fully threaded tree, where uh, the leaf nodes also have, carry some amount of information right up to the, uh, the parent from where they, they originated. So, it's a, it's a little more memory intensive, but the tree traversal is, is a lot faster in a fully threaded tree code. And uh, the problem that he actually chose to study was uh, safety associated with transporting hydrogen. If you would like to make use of hydrogen as a fuel, and if it's got to be a viable fuel, you've got to be able to transport it. The unfortunate fact is that uh, hydrogen and the atmosphere actually combine in an explosive mixture in almost all concentrations. So the idea was, and experiments have been done, but since the phenomenon occurs in very, very small um, uh, time scales, the order of microseconds, uh, the experimental results showed considerable variation, so people were not really able to understand the mechanism. So he decided to actually do this by way of, of computation. So it was a code, so the code uh, version 1.0 was actually ported onto the Blue Gene P, and the code was developed. Alexei is also a recipient of the early science program allocation hours, which were granted to him. And the code was developed, and the I.O. of the code, um, the, the parallel I.O. of the code was improved tremendously. The current uh, code shows a 41 percent of uh, the I.O. and the I.O. performance of the current code is about 41 times better than the initial code that we received. And uh, the code has been fully threaded. Uh, it's an open MP and MPI code. And when and going from P to Q, uh, they were able to see a nearly uh, 10 times performance improvement on a node basis. Uh, the next uh, 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 the next result that I would like to show is a simulation that has been carried out by, by Gabriel Staffelbach and his team, uh, Thierry Ponceau and Gabriel Staffelbach at, uh, at Surfax. Um, they make use of an LES code. It's a finite element, explicit finite element code, AVBP, where they actually simulate um, in order to understand the experiment and to also uh, advise how the experiment could actually be scaled up. This is an actual experiment which, is, uh, which has been built and the experiment is being done in Norway, and they are actually simulating the experiment based on a number of uh, geometries where the, the baffles that you see over here can be, can be varied, the positions can be varied. And uh, I hope I'm able to play the, the movie. How do I? Oh, just click the mouse, okay. So here is a movie. Um, which actually shows how the, how the explosion actually is initiated to the left wall and how it actually progresses, how it actually goes through the various baffles and so on. So this code uh, um, has been run in over a billion tetrahedral elements. It's a DNS simulation where it's a direct numerical simulation of the flame, not the flow. Um, 
the code has been run on about uh, 45,000 cores on the BlueGene P, and currently the code is actually being run on the BlueGene Q, exactly the same geometry on about 140,000 cores. And Gabriel has been working on an MPI and OpenMP version of this code as well now. The next, uh, this is a fairly old result, and there's a reason why I'm showing this. This is a largely simulation of a spectral element code developed by Paul Fisher. It's an open source code. Those of you who would actually like to use this code are, can freely download it. The code shows excellent scaling on the BlueGene P as well as the BlueGene Q over here. And the reason I actually show the simulation, although it was done on the BlueGene P, at the time it was done in 2009, this was a hero simulation. This simulation is a regular simulation now. And as a matter of fact, this simulation forms part of simulations that Paul Fisher is doing in conjunction with uh, engineers at GE Global Research and GE Hitachi Nuclear for, for uh, their nuclear reactor design. So they have actually been awarded an ALCC project, and they are actually carrying out similar simulations over here in a fairly routine manner. So what used to be a hero simulation in 2009 is a regular production simulation now. Moving forward, here's a simulation of uh, the effectiveness of the vertical rudder of an aircraft and how the effectiveness can actually be improved by using synthetic jets. This work is actually being done by Ken Jansen, along with collaborators both at UC Berkeley, who are actually doing some experiments on this, and, and RPI. And we were extremely fortunate to hire one of Ken Jansen's postdocs, Michelle Raskin, and his contributions have been uh, tremendously useful in actually improving the code. This again, the PASCA code again is an open source code. It is an implicit finite element code. And uh, the code on Mira, they have actually scaled it up to use 92 billion tetrahedral elements. And they have actually run this code on the entire machine. The regular production runs, actually, um, the regular production runs are anywhere from a billion to five billion tetrahedral elements. And this code may, is a pure MPI code, but they actually run MPI on all four threads. Of, uh, so there are four hardware threads per core. They run MPI on each one of those cores over here. Um, and one thing you can see from over here is that I can see a 20% improvement in the effectiveness of uh, the vertical rudder. And uh, I'm told that uh, their simulations compare well with, uh, with experiments. The next simulation over here is uh, done by uh, people at, uh, by Giri uh, Jyoti Prasad at G Global Research. And uh, Giri has been collaborating with Professor Lele over here at Stanford. Uh, this particular simulation is actually done with the implicit, with the incompressible flow solver, uh, Cliff, which is actually in the Charles uh, suite of solvers, where Charles is a code being developed by the Cascade Engineering, Cascade Technologies group over here. At, uh, at Stanford. And so what you see over here is an LES of a DU-96 airfoil. This is uh, representative of the airfoils which are actually used on wind turbine blades. The idea is to understand the separation mechanism at the trailing edge of the airfoil and the role that it plays in the acoustics of uh, wind turbine blades. Uh, so there, there were several key challenges and since it's an incompressible flow solver, it makes use of an algebraic multigrid uh, pressure Poisson solver. And the idea was to improve the performance of that solver. So there are two solvers uh, which the code can currently use. It can make use of the Boomer AMG solver, which is in HyPRI. And it can also make use of the ML solver, which are in the Trilinos package. The ML solvers actually offers a lot more flexibility with regard to what you can do at the coarsest level. And uh, these simulations were actually carried out. Uh, there were some of these simulations which actually I did for, for the team. So I'm uh, quite familiar with this particular code and the solvers used in this. Um, How many minutes do I have? That, uh, OK, I think I have about six minutes. Um, moving forward, so uh, this particular uh, simulation was actually done over several insight allocations. And uh, they actually had an allocation last year, both on Mira. They had about 60 million hours on Mira. They had about 45 million hours on Intrepid. And this is one of three allocations 
that GE Global Research, uh, this is actually one of three projects that GE Global Research has been solving. The other problem is uh, that of jet noise. And uh, you see a, a picture over here of uh, the jet noise simulation from one of their uh, um, uh, jet engine nozzles, which has both a core flow as well as an axial uh, um, uh, an annular flow, a core flow as well as an annular flow over here. The code that has actually been made use of over here is, uh, is a compact finite difference scheme, which was developed at the Air Force Research Laboratory. And the code is currently being modified to make use of OpenMP. And um, one, one of the areas in which they did collaborate with me was to actually parallelize their uh, EOD decomposition code, which was actually used to um, identify the acoustic modes which are actually responsible for, uh, for the sound made by the jet engine. Um, moving forward, um, we have another simulation. And uh, here's a simulation by Li Shan and his team at Cascade Technologies, where they actually made use of, uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a low Mach number formulation solver. Um, which actually uses chemi chemical species in it, and uh, this simulation was actually was actually used to look at um, look at the complex flows inside combustors and the formation of hot spots, and uh, how uh, and to understand the process process better. So um, we uh, there were people in the visualization team who actually worked with. Uh, with Lee and with, uh, with Dave Phillips, I don't know if he's over here, the audience, with Dave Phillips, um, to actually write the data in such a way that it could be visualized uh, more efficiently. Um, since I'm running out of time, I'll show one more. And here is uh, a snapshot from uh, Professor Moen's research, which has actually been uh, which has received several ALCC allocations over the last four years, and this is their most recent ALCC allocation, which has actually been used to look at wall modeling for a variety of flows for jet noise, um, as well as for, uh, for airfoils. And the snapshot over here actually shows, uh, uh, shows the CL, uh, the lift coefficient versus alpha, for a multi-element airfoil or multi, uh, we're making use of wall modeling over here. And uh, a key impact of this particular research um, is that they have actually been able to demonstrate that wall modeling can be used as an effective, uh, effective tool. It does not require as many coefficients that you actually have to tweak and twiddle as uh, RAND's LES hybridization. And it actually presents an interesting contrast to, to Philippe's view that uh, it is detached study simulations and its variants, IDDES and DDES and so on, which are the only viable tools you can use for, um, for design going forward. So it'd be interesting to actually see how the new evolving exascale technologies can actually take advantage of making these uh, a reality. So I can show some more. Those of you who actually want to talk to me, I can give you more of the details on this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any question for Ramesh? So those are all uh, uh, allocations on, on these two machines that you were looking, yes. that you were showing before. So yes. all blue jean machines. All blue right? jean machines. And uh, what's the next uh, machine that is coming online? I wish I could okay. talk about it, but okay. <laughs> I imagine that that was the answer. So. <laughs> Maybe there's